God be the glory for the great things he has done. The book of Isaiah, Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verses 14 through 21. I'm reading from the NIV version of the Bible. My Bible reads thusly, this is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake, I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians in the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One. Israel's creator, your king. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wastelands to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself that they may proclaim my praise. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be unto God. I'd like to wrestle uh, with you on this morning from a sermon entitled, A Fresh Start, A Fresh Start, Amen. Uh, my brothers and sisters, as we are creating these new normals, as we are in the midst of uh, creating and establishing new ways and new paths, uh, I believe this is the opportunity uh, that God is giving us to have a fresh start. Uh, the reality is, is that uh, we sometimes need a do-over. We sometimes need a start again. We sometimes need the slate uh, to be washed clean so that we can have a fresh start. Uh, God has a way of giving us a reset. He has a way of calling a time out in the midst of life so that we can receive the fresh start that we may need. And the reality is, my brothers and sisters, that there will come a time in our lives that we will all need a fresh start. There'll come a time in our life where we all need the chance and the opportunity uh, to receive a reset, a do-over. There will come a time uh, in our lives where God will provide for us the chance that we need to start over. Isaiah, Isaiah, this prophet is speaking on behalf of God. And he starts off by saying, this is what the Lord says. He, the Lord speaks through Isaiah and says, Isaiah, tell my people this as they are in Babylonian control, as they are under the hand of the Babylonians at this particular time, as they are enslaved and engulfed and their way of life is no longer normal. They've created a new normal in this season. The Lord Lord starts off by bragging and boasting about himself. He says, tell them your redeemer, 
the Holy One of Israel. Uh, he gives some clout. He, he throws his weight around in the beginning of the conversation with Isaiah to remind his people that he is still God and God alone. He starts off by saying, tell them your Redeemer, Israel, this personal relationship that the Lord is established with you. He wants to remind you of who he really is. Is. And I've got a sneaky suspicion, my brothers and sisters, uh, that God is using this time as uh, a reminder to let us know uh, who he really is. God is taking this time of, of isolation and sanctification and us being set apart in quarantine to break down the status quo of who we are think he is, who we have professed he is from time to time to let us know uh, who he really is. He lets them know, I am your redeemer. I'm the one that created you. You are my creation. You are the apple of my eye. And the only way you're going to get back to me is through the redemption uh, of my hand. It says, the Lord, uh, your redeemer, the holy one uh, of Israel. And then he goes on and let the people of Israel know I see you right where you are. I, I want somebody to know this morning that God sees you right where you are. He sees the internal struggles that you don't allow anybody else to see. He sees uh, the struggles that you have going on in your mind and in uh, your heart. He sees your external struggle that everybody else uh, sees you struggling with as well but won't extend a hand uh, to help you. God lets the children of Israel know I see you right where you uh, are. And after letting them go, uh, 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 extending his cloud and then letting them know uh, who he really is. He allows them uh, to know that he's taken observation uh, in them. He says, for your sake, uh, I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians. Uh, God lets him know that redemption is soon uh, to come, but you got to hang on in there. It says the same pride, that the same ships uh, that they took pride in is what I I'm going to use uh, to bring them down. And watch this. He says, I am uh, the Lord. Watch this. Here's, here's, here's some ownership. Your holy one, Israel's creator, your king. God says, I am now uh, taking personal what you are taking personal. Uh, that now I'm taking personal uh, what you're going through. I'm taking personal uh, what it is that you're struggling with. And that's the one thing, my brother and sister that I love about God. God is not a separate God, but God is a God that will get into the midst of your troubles and trials with you. That's the one thing I love about God is that God will never leave us, nor will God forsake us. God says, I am the Lord, your Holy One. There is a, a positive, possessive pronoun right there. Your Holy One. I am your God which means that you are my people and just as much as you are concerned about me I am concerned about you even when you can't trace God you got to know that God is concerned about you even when times are hard and it seems that God is nowhere to be found you got to know that God is concerned about you that you are God's creation you are the apple of God's eye you are the one that God is forever in love with and because that you are the apple of God's eye the one that God is eternally in love with God says not only are you mine but I am yours watch what Isaiah says he says this is what the Lord says he gives a, a testimony God says let me remind you he who made a way through the sea a path through the mighty waters who drew out the chariots and horses the armies and reinforcements together and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, uh, snuffed out all like a wick. <laughs> Listen, Isaiah says, God told me to tell you, uh, let me remind you of what I've done uh, in the past for your forefathers. Uh, I am the God that, that took Pharaoh's army and drowned them in the Red Sea. I uh, am the God that calls for the children of Israel uh, to walk over on dry land. Let me
me remind you uh, of some of the great things uh, that I have done. And here's a gentle reminder to somebody this morning that God uh, has done some great things in your life. You know, we don't uh, testify like we used to. The Bible declares that we will overcome, uh, we will be overcomers by the blood of the Lamb uh, and the word of our testimonies. Uh, and every now and then, God will have to uh, remind, uh, remind us of what uh, he's done. He, he'll remind us of the ways uh, he's made. He'll remind us of the doors uh, he'll open. Can I let you know that life uh, has a possibility and probability at times uh, for causing us to uh, forget about some of the great things that God has done. Uh, life sometimes can be so disturbing uh, and so distracting that we forget uh, the many blessings and benefits uh, that come from being a child uh, of God. But every now and then, uh, God will say, let me remind you uh, of what I've done. Let me remind you uh, of the words of your own testimony that if it had not been for the Lord uh, who was on my side, that, that, that God made ways where there were no ways, that God healed uh, and picked you up off of your bed uh, of affliction, that God is the one that covered and kept you in times of test trials and uh, tribulation. Every now and then, God will allow uh, situations to arise to remind us uh, of our testimony. He says, I'm the one, I'm the one, I'm the one uh, that was beneficial to your forefathers and your, your foremothers. I'm the one, I'm the one, I'm the one that, that showed them how to get through. I'm the one that showed up uh, in the midst of crisis that, 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 that caused for salvation to hit your household. I'm, a, I'm the one. Every now and then, uh, he'll remind us of what he's done. But I like what God says uh, when we get to verse 18. He says, forget the former thing. Forget the former things. And I believe that God tells us to forget the former things because sometimes uh, we can get so consumed with what God's done that we can't see what God is doing. That we can get so caught up in, in looking for God in those familiar ways uh, that we refuse to look for God in some unfamiliar ways. That, that we get so consumed uh, with our testimony that, that we, missed, we miss what God is trying to do right now. God tells Isaiah, he says, tell them, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Ha, uh, uh, don't get stuck in the rearview mirror that you miss what God is trying to take you through the windshield. Uh, he says, see, uh, let, let, let me pause parenthetically right there because we'll rush past that. See is now the evidence of our eyes that, that faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things uh, not seeing. But God says, see, which means a manifestation. Uh, I am doing a new thing, that the new thing that God is doing is not only going to be evident to you as we talked earlier about the internal struggle, struggle that we go through, but it will be evident to everybody else that's been a witness to your external struggle. Y'all ain't gonna help me in this place. We talked about God reminding us of what he's done and, and how God reminded us of who he is and how God was going to deliver us. But when God says, see, that is the evidence of manifestation that's getting ready to come into your life. And I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I just felt a leap in my spirit to let you know that it's not just gonna be something you have faith faith for, uh, but what you've been having faith for, uh, it's getting ready to manifest in your life. Uh, God says through Isaiah, see, uh, I am doing a uh, new thing. Yeah, that there's going to be evidence of the new thing. There's going to be uh, some, some, some proof uh, to your faith. And people have been wondering uh, how you've been believing this long in Babylon. People uh, have been wondering how you've been holding on uh, with all of your internal struggles. And the reality is uh, you've just 
just been waiting on a manifestation. Uh, you've been waiting to see those uh, three letters combined together, S-E-E, -E, which means God is getting ready to show up uh, and show out in your life. He says, see, uh, I am doing a new thing. Watch this. Now it springs up. Uh, do you not perceive it? Let me let you know something, uh, that everybody is not going to understand uh, this season where we're going from faith uh, to manifestation. Uh, everybody ain't going to get uh, that God is getting ready to move from uh, what we're believing to now what's manifested and what we are seeing. Uh, and the reality is, uh, in this fresh start, uh, in this new season, uh, you're not just going to have to believe and hope and wish and pray, uh, but God says, I'm going to give some evidence uh, that I'm doing a new thing. It says, uh, do you not perceive it? Watch this. Uh, I'm making a way uh, in the wilderness. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to uh, today, but I want to let you know that God is now uh, making a way in the wilderness. Uh, after hearing about the evidence of God uh, drowning Pharaoh in the midst of the Red Sea, he also takes them back uh, to what happened in the wilderness. Y'all ain't going to help me. Uh, you see, God provided for the children of Israel uh, in the wilderness. That's why he uses uh, this correlation of uh, wilderness past uh, and wilderness present. Y'all ain't going to help me. Uh, and it says, I'm making a way in the wilderness. Yeah, I'm, I'm providing navigation in places uh, that you've never been before. I'm, I'm, anytime we see the word wilderness in the text, uh, it's evidence of uh, bondage or coming out of uh, bondage. The same way the children of Israel came out of uh, Egypt, they went through the Red Sea and they ended up where? Uh, in the wilderness. The evidence of you coming out uh, is the wilderness, but the good news is uh, even in wilderness times, God's providing uh, a way. Watch this. Am I not only making a way uh, in the wilderness, but streams uh, in the wastelands, the places where nothing seems to grow, the places where nothing seems to flourish. God says, uh, I'm going to show you uh, streams. Here's good news. Anytime you see streams uh, in the Bible or the body of water, it means birth. It means uh, something coming into flourishing. And God says, uh, I'm going to make ways in the wilderness uh, and streams in the wasteland. Watch this. It says, uh, the wild animal animals honor me, the jackals and the isles, uh, owls, because I provide water uh, in the wilderness and streams uh, in the wasteland to give uh, people, to give drink to my people, my chosen. Uh, some of y'all missed it. Listen, uh, it doesn't say that the streams uh, and the ways in the wilderness uh, are for the jackals and the owls and the wild animals, uh, but they will benefit for, from it even though it ain't for them. Uh, I came to let you know uh, that in this fresh start, even people that have doubted you, uh, even people that have talked about you, even people uh, that don't understand you are going to be blessed uh, because of your blessing. Uh, because of your obedience by faith in God, uh, God is going to bless those that are around you uh, that ain't necessarily with you. Uh, you ain't going to help me in this place. Uh, that God is going to use what he uses to bless you uh, to help those people uh, that even doubted you. Uh, it says that these, I've created uh, this, this, this stream in, in the wasteland. I made a way in the wilderness uh, just to give drink to my people uh, that even as we are travailing uh, out of coming out of bondage uh, and going into our blessing, uh, God says I'm still going to provide for you uh, in the transitional period uh, that as you get a fresh start uh, just like a newborn baby uh, you gonna need some assistance uh, before you get on your feet uh, just like that college graduate or that high school graduate uh, you, before you jump out there in the real world uh, you gonna need some assistance to get on your feet uh, and God says uh, I've got a public assistance uh, that's greater than the PPP uh, or the payroll protection plan uh, I got a public assistance uh, that's greater than unemployment benefits. Uh, I got a public assistance uh, that's greater than any food stamp uh, that you can receive. Uh, I got a public assistance uh, that can outdo section 8. Uh, God says in his text, uh, I'm going to give you so much uh, that even in the wilderness, uh, those that ain't with you, uh, but still around you, uh, that they're going to be blessed too. Uh, watch this. It says, uh, I'm 
I'm doing this for the people I formed for myself. Well, good morning, my brother and my sister. I'm getting ready to let you go, but here's why. That even in the midst of pandemic, we can't afford to lose our praise. The Bible says that the people I formed for myself, that you won't create it just for you. I told you in the first part of the sermon uh, that you were created for God uh, and that God created you uh, for himself. Uh, and if God uh, created you uh, for himself, uh, then that means God will uh, take care of you. Uh, I came to let you know uh, that God has given a fresh start uh, for his people. Uh, and here's the purpose uh, for the people. Uh, it says that they may uh, proclaim my praise. Uh, good morning, y'all. Uh, may the Lord God bless you uh, real, real good. Uh, but I stopped by here uh, on my way to heaven uh, just to encourage your heart uh, to let you know uh, that there's still a praise uh, in the midst of pandemic, uh, that there's still a paradise uh, in the midst of the virus, uh, that God is still uh, making ways in the wilderness and putting streams in the wetlands that at this time God is getting ready to change it from faith to manifestation God is getting ready to move from what you believe to what everybody is getting ready to see is there anybody here that knows that God knows how to take a mess and turn it into a miracle. God knows how to take a pandemic and turn it into a praise party. God knows how to turn it around and say what the devil meant for bad, what the enemy tried to take you out with and work it for your good. Why don't you hug somebody and say, neighbor, this praise is for you. Why don't you holler at your boy and say, pastor, I got a praise on the inside that I just can't keep to myself. I've got something going on that everybody can't perceive that I believe greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. I came to this morning to let you know that there is a fresh start there is a fresh wind. There is some fresh oil. There is something new that God is doing in this season. Why don't you holler through the Facebook and say, Pastor, you preaching to me. I can see there's something on the inside that's bubbling up within me. I perceive that it does not yet appear what is going to be, but the good news is I can tell something is different. I got a sneaky suspicion that God is. I said God is. God is. I said God is up to something. I high five myself and encourage myself. Be not dismayed, Jason. Whatever be tied, God will. I said God will take care of you. Be not upset. Be not discouraged. Be not confused. Because God is still on the throne. God still sits high. God still looks low. God still has the whole world in his hand. Good morning, y'all. Grace be unto 
unto you, but I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready for my fresh start. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has it entered in to the hearts of men the great things that the Lord has in store for you. And if you know God's got some great things in store for you, can you help me close it and lift your hands, open your mouth, throw your head back, and tell the Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Shout yes, shout yes, shout yes. God giving us a fresh start, an opportunity to sincerely have the old things pass away. Behold, all things shall become new. He's the same God. That's what he was telling the children of Israel through Isaiah, he said, let my people know that I'm the same God that's the same that grandmamas and granddaddies in Babylon, I mean in, in Egypt. And not only am I going to do what I did then, but when he said, behold, I'm doing a new thing, he lets us know that I'm going to do even greater this time, God help me, than I did last time. It says, see, I'm doing a new thing. God told me to tell you this morning to look for the new thing. I don't know who that's for, but look for the new thing. See, the only way you can see him doing a new thing is if you're looking for something new. And here's how you know, because last week we were dealing the whole week with our Facebook Live with discerning the voice of the Lord. There'll be something in your spirit that'll agree with what you see. God, help me. There'll be something in your spirit that'll say, this is God. After it says, see, can't you see that I'm doing a new thing? It says, behold, see, I'm doing a new thing. Then it says, can you not perceive it? That when God gives the manifestation in your life, what you see will agree with what the Spirit says. And I don't know who that's for this morning, but I know somebody's looking for affirmation and confirmation. And when you see it, I want to let you know your spirit is going to leap. That what you feel in your spirit is going to agree and God going to say this is it. That the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that dwells within you, when you see it, it's going to connect. Know what the seeing say? Say try the spirit by the spirit. And this season your faith is going to move into manifestation. And I want to encourage you to be prepared for the fresh start. Listen, if you're not saved today, right where you are, we want to pray the prayer of salvation for you. I know that everybody watching ain't saved. 
And so you don't have to worry about walking down the aisle. You don't have to worry about what people next to you are going to think. We're just going to pray this prayer of salvation. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am a sinner. And I ask now that you would come into my heart and cleanse me. I believe that Jesus was your son and that on the third day he rose from the dead. Because of him, I can have relationship with you. So allow the blood of Jesus to cover all of my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my life. I make you Lord over my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now for someone that wants to rededicate themselves, pray this prayer with me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew in me a right spirit. Blot out all of my transgressions. Forgive me of my sins. God, help me to stay on this path and not to stray from you again. Thank you for being a faithful God that never leaves me nor forsakes me. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, listen. Last but not least, somebody watching may want to become a member of the church. Well, the one thing that I say is that we're family. And so you become a virtual member all you want to, but when, if, if you really desire to become a member, when the doors of this building open back up, you come straight in. You come straight in, you come straight down front. I don't care what's going on in the midst of the service, we're going to welcome you in because we are a family. And even in times of struggle, even in times of turmoil and pandemic, the one thing that can't be broken is the family. Listen, we love you. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Don't let anything or anybody steal your joy. Don't let anything or anybody disturb your peace. Have a great day in the Lord. Have a great day on purpose. Now, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make the Lord's face and the Lord's countenance to shine upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. Peace that you no longer worry or be weary. Peace that you may rest through the night. May the blessed God of peace, Jehovah Shalom, grant you God's peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, guys, have a great day on purpose. Please stay tuned for this announcement. God bless you. We pray that this worship experience has blessed you. And we want to take the time to thank you in advance for your continued support of the Bethany Baptist Church. There are several ways that you can continue to support us as we do God's work and God's will, God's way. Uh, the first way that you can support us is electronically via Givelify. Just go to your app store and download the Givelify app and look for this particular house of worship and you can give that way. The second way is is that you can mail your gifts in. You can mail them right here to the church, 2587 Campostella Road, Chesapeake, Virginia, 23324. Last but not least, that we do have some drop-off times here at the church that the church office will continue to be open to you. Uh, every Wednesday from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., as well as from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., as well as Sundays, while we're shooting our virtual worship from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Thank you once again for your continued support. We would not be able to do this without your help. God bless you and heaven smile upon you.